Right, someone writes in to ask, would Christ Church ever want Nancy to speak on Mother's Day? Um, I assume that this question is coming from a recent flurry of women being um, asked to preach in church, ostensibly complementarian churches. And it's okay because they're just speaking from the pulpit in the slot normally reserved for a sermon and they're not actually on the elder board or, you know. Okay. They're, they're, they're people turning themselves, twisting themselves into pretzels to make room for the next uh, compromise. So the answer is no, we would not ask Nancy to preach. And if we did ask her to preach and if she were prevailed upon to preach, she wouldn't be preaching on motherhood or anything sentimentally. She'd be pinning our ears back for our ungodliness <laughs> and, and she would let us have it and I'm sure she'd do a great job but she would never do that great job because um, uh, biblical women educated women mm -hmm. know how to read and if they're submissive to what the Apostle Paul teaches they're they're gonna read that and they're gonna say yeah you know what? Uh, no, of course I'm not going to preach. Of course I'm not going to preach. And so what this whole thing reminds me of is a complicated... Um, Cotton Mather one time said, if you tie an animal up, he will know the length of his tether by morning. Mm -hmm. You know, he, the animal will know just how far it can go. And when we come up with some formulation, well, a woman in the church, a woman can do anything that an unordained man can do. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, could you have an unordained man preach? Well, yeah, ta-da, <laughs> right? So you find how, how you've got this leash, but it, it's kind of stretchy. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of going the other way, you, we ought to go, man, maybe we're letting unordained men do too much. Mm. Nobody, nobody yeah. goes in that direction. Yeah. But they're trying to make room for the next compromise. Mm. So what is the current compromise? What will the next compromise be? And are, is the current debate making room for the next compromise? Okay. How do you, um, Nancy does quite a lot of speaking and mm -hmm. quite a lot of writing, so how do you fence that to uh, so, maintain your principle there? Yeah, so um, for example, let, let's say Nancy's speaking at a conference. She, when she prepares a talk, she gears the talk to women. She's mm -hmm. speaking to women, all right? And that's what I think her responsibility is. She is invited to speak at a women's group or a women's conference, and let's say she's halfway through the talk to the ladies at this church, and she looks up and notices that the sound guy is the sound guy. He's mm -hmm. the guy up in the booth recording the talk. And he's just there as a tech guy, and he's recording the talk. But let's say he's listening as he he goes, and let's say he learned something. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible doesn't say that a man can't learn from a woman. Yeah. Um, in fact, it ex expressly says uh, Priscilla and Aquila took Apollos aside, and it says, and they instructed him in the way more accurately. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very clear that Priscilla was a participant right. in helping set Apollos straight. But that was in the synagogue driveway uh, out, outside in the parking lot uh -huh. when they were explaining to him. Uh, when, when Nancy and I talk, she'll often, she'll often say in her Bible reading, she, have you noticed that in this passage here it says this and this and this? And I say, huh, that's worth pursuing. And I just learned something from her. Uh -huh. um, but she doesn't open the word authoritatively and say, Doug, sit down, let me explain to you how it is. So learning from a woman is different than um, um, as you would have with a man who picked up a book by a woman mm -hmm. and read it and learned something. I don't think that's prohibited at all. Right. Uh, but when a woman presumes to exercise or wield authority and preach the word with authority in the church and both men and women are there, I think it's just absolutely off limits. So if Nancy's doing a talk on, um, you know, on biblical motherhood and she mm -hmm. at a conference, you've described what would happen there. Let's say she was at a classical Christian school conference and she was doing a talk on... English grammar. English grammar. Yeah. Um, do you have a problem if it's a... 
none, none at all. Okay. So, um, and, and Nancy wrote an, a, a, grammar, a, te a grammar textbook, uh -huh. and, so, and she's d given talks at ACCS conferences on grammar, and has no problem at all speaking authoritatively on subject verb agreement or what how to tell what the direct object is to a room full of men and women both okay I, I don't think the Bible addresses that at all okay. but but I do think let me let me hasten to add that if things are uh, ordered rightly in the home and ordered rightly in the church where men are leading I think it will be the case that public teaching positions that are lawful for women to hold in the, in the society, mm -hmm. while lawful, will be generally rare. Okay. I, I think that'll be the odd circumstance, like Deborah as a judge mm -hmm. in Israel. I think it can happen, I think it can be lawful, but I think that if in Isaiah 3, the, uh, when women, um, uh, a society's under judgment, when children and women rule over them. When that becomes common, and all your math teachers, and all your English teachers, mm -hmm. and all your uh, lawyers, and all your senators are women, mm -hmm. or 75% of them are women, I think that's a society under mm -hmm. judgment, even though it's lawful for a woman to hold that position. So, to continue with the classical Christian school movement for a moment then, you'd have no problem with women excelling in leadership within the classical Christian education movement, but you'd have a big problem if the classical Christian education movement was run all by women. Uh, absolutely, because um, the, there's no, I don't see how you could have that going on without the men flaking. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I believe that and, and the women, and not only that, but the women who are in all these positions of influence and authority are going to be deeply, and prof if they're biblical Christian women, they're going to be deeply and profoundly exasperated because women want men to lead. Mm -hmm. And and they want men who are sure of themselves, confident without being cocky. And so, uh, so basically, um, all those women who are excelling want a man that they can look up to. Mm -hmm. well, that means men have got to excel. So basically, I believe that we should promote men for excellence, mm -hmm. but I don't think we should prohibit women who are functioning in a lawful area. If they excel, I don't have any problem with acknowledging the, the fact oh. that they have excelled. But y you wanna, might want to look at how you're educating your boys and how you're bringing your boys up um, if, there, if you start to see too much of it. Okay, thanks.